rivers that make Bangladesh. Thick with Himalayan silt, the Ganges and Brahmaputra have slowly built the largest delta in the world, home to tens of millions of people. And now the tide is turning. If you want to get a sense of what's at stake at the Paris climate talks, Bangladesh pretty much says it all. There are more people here at direct risk from sea level rise and extreme weather events than anywhere else on the planet. We all need a deal at the Paris talks, but nowhere needs one more than Bangladesh. In this part of the delta, a low mud wall is all that protects families and farms from inundation. It's a precarious existence, but the risk of high tides and cyclones has always been worth taking for the fishing and fertile soil. But that balance is shifting. This island is about the size of Manhattan and home to 40,000 people. There are 100 others like it. In all, 20 million live just above the waterline. People here truly are living on the edge. As you walk up this earth embankment, you'll see it's all there is holding back the tide. On the other side of it, their rice crops are well below the level of the river. This is regularly overtopped by cyclones and storm surges, and that's before you even factor in inevitable sea level rise. The model's suggesting that by the end of the century, this entire area will be permanently underwater. The villagers tell me they want the government to raise the embankments that protect homes and fields. The problem is, in this porous delta, the sea is rising beneath our feet. So much so, you can taste it. It's a little bit salty. It is a little but bit it's salty. Not. So it's within the acceptable limit for yeah. drinking water. In this village, a research project is forcing rainwater into an underground aquifer. It's the only water here that's safe to drink. The groundwater is now nearly as salty as the ocean. So finding a kind of year-round sustainable source of fresh drinking water is a major challenge here because there's a lot of water everywhere, but this, this is all saline. The salt water is affecting the health of villagers who drink it. It also means rice crops can't survive. These people are used to adapting. They're growing salt-tolerant rice where they can. Others surrendering to the seawater have switched from rice to more lucrative shrimp or fish farming. But here, there are forces at work beyond anyone's control. These brothers are helping scientists monitor ground compaction. As seas rise, much of Bangladesh is sinking. If the compaction is higher, then you have like double impact of the sea level rise. So sea level is rising, landing, land is sinking, so the magnitude is kind of doubled. Here, the ground is sinking just a few millimetres a year, but it's enough to make a bad situation worse. So what happens, I ask these women, when they can no longer grow crops and the sea levels are well above the sinking land? And most of Bangladesh's migrants are coming here to already overcrowded Dhaka. If you want to get a sense of what the future holds for Bangladesh, come to one of Dhaka's many slums. It's estimated because of rising tides and riverbank erosion alone, 200,000 migrants come to the city every year and it's already struggling to cope. If you factor in two degrees of global warming, the number of migrants is expected to hit the millions within decades. 
The combination of a cyclone and poverty displaced this woman and her family from the Delta. But even if she did go back, could she afford to stay? The realities of climate change mean life is getting harder, if not impossible, for many of the Delta's poorest. In the lowest lying areas, a boat is a sound investment. But the fisherman making this one isn't certain what kind of future he's buying into. He's now sold his remaining land and is moving his new boat and family up the creek to wait for the water's edge to come to him.